Morning everybody. I actually just rubbed my eyeball with my finger after touching jalapenos. Uh, not ideal, uh, but I want to get this recorded so I'm not going to wait around for my eye to feel better. <laughs> and it is kind of funny. Uh, it's about noon and I've just made myself some lunch. I've got crackers, jalapenos from my garden from last year that are currently also residing in my eye at the moment. And I've got a book to read and I'm not exactly sure yet if I'm going to work today. It's Sunday. I had a pretty busy week last week. And though I am really excited to get started in the shower, I'm also quite excited to be outside as well. The weather is amazing and being stuck inside in the darkest, dingiest corner of my house isn't exactly what I want to do on a day like this. So we'll see. I haven't decided. What I am going to do is eat some lunch and, and read a book. Here's my lunch with the offending jalapenos, chocolatey coffee, and the book that I'm hoping to dive into today, Essential Nat Natural Plasters. And the reason I want to read this book is because inside here somewhere, there's a whole bunch of information on a technique called Tadalact, which is a Moroccan technique to sort of waterproof lime. And that's what I'm hoping to do eventually for the shower. By just kind of hanging out here outside today, reading my little plasters book, that's kind of me procrastinating because some of the stuff that I have to do this week is um, not something I've done before and therefore a little bit intimidating, but also exciting. I do like trying new things. So who knows where Sunday is going to go. I'm going to enjoy my lunch, enjoy my coffee, have a read of this book, and... Yeah, hopefully I don't uh, touch my eye again and have the jalapenos attempt to burn my face off. So I finished my lunch. I read the book, the Tadalak part, and unfortunately it's only like two pages long. So it's a massive book about natural plasters with a very small section on Tadalak, which is okay because there's all kinds of books specifically about Tadalac. Uh So yeah, kind of a fail on the book reading front. But I've got this awesome mushroom pattern bag full of slightly scary plumbing stuff. So let's get this out, take a look at what's inside here, and see if I can puzzle through how to connect taps to a pipe. Sort of a random bag of things. Oh, I forgot to plant those. Need to get that sharpened. So this I think is the thing that cuts the middle pipe. This is the thing I need to go through the wall. This is another thing I think I might need to make the hole bigger to go through the wall. Some plumbing stuff. Fittings, things that don't apply. So oh, there's another fitting and another fitting. I've got my bag of tricks. I think today I would love to get this metal pipe cut to the length that it needs to be to go through the wall. So with the piping for plumbing, apparently there's a bunch of different kinds. This is stainless steel. And I think in North America, it's copper people used to use. My dad has some experience with copper plumbing. I don't think that's a thing here. You also have this weird green stuff that melts together somehow with a special machine, which I've never seen before. And then PVC pipe, um, I think there's two kinds, but many people here recommend using something called multi-layer PVC, which is bendy, fairly easy to use, doesn't kink, though it will kind of bend around corners and stuff. The reason I got this stainless steel stuff is because well, the guy in the shop said, that, said that's what he would recommend, but I was expecting that I would have pipes visible. And if I have any piping visible, I definitely want it to be nice looking. But now that I'm kind of looking at my place, I don't think I will have any piping visible. So I bought this anyway, and rather than return it, I might use this to go through the stone wall in the sections it needs to go through. Um, maybe just because it's more sturdy. I don't really know. And because I don't really like to entomb things into uh, lime if I have a choice. Like I don't just want to bury this 
into the lime and never to be able to get it out again. So I'm going to put it into this plastic pipe. So it just means I have to have a bigger hole in the wall to get the plastic pipe through, but it will mean that if anything goes wrong or if I want to change anything up, I can easily remove the metal pipe. So this is the gizmo I need to be able to cut the pipe to the right size. Plus I'm going to open up this tap and see what's happening in there and see if I can figure out how to attach all the fittings together, cut the pipe to size, and then once I do all that, that'll give me the spacing I need to know where I need to drill the holes into the wall. So this connection here will need Teflon and then that goes into the tap which goes into here which then goes through the wall and also has these little things over top of it I guess somehow. One thing that's kind of weird that I just realized is that I don't know for a shower I feel like the tap should kind of be pointing down when you sort of do it like that. The way this is designed, it's going to be sticking out, which is probably fine, but it just seems a little unusual. But whatever, I've got a big space, it won't be jabbing into me or anything, so, so it's all good. I still also need to buy the bit that connects here and then goes up, and I'm going to get one of those double rain showery type things with the option to just have the removable shower head as well. I was going to buy it a while ago, but I wasn't entirely sure on which one I wanted. Uh, and I just didn't want to store another thing because I don't know when I'm going to actually install it. But the shower section of this thing isn't actually going through the wall anywhere. It's just connecting to this. And in order to know where I needed to drill the holes, I first had to buy the tap. So I knew the spacing. So that's the reasoning behind buying one and not buying the other one. So I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do. What's my next move here? Um, I guess, I guess I'll attach all this together and attach it to the pipe. I guess, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to cut some pipe. So this guy here is the pipe cutter. It probably won't show up on the camera, but I think I'm actually not in the same groove. I'm kind of like working my way up the pipe, so I've done something horribly wrong. Yeah, instead of spinning around and around, it's kind of going up in sort of a, um, a screw. So maybe this thing is off center. It looks like this is wobbly here. Maybe I need to tighten this screw. That's better. I don't think I had this thing tight enough the first time around. Okay, so I've cut my pipes and I must admit that I then entered a world of confusion um, because these pieces here, this end is what attaches to the tap and this end is what goes into the, the pipe connector. So I kind of grasp all of that stuff, but I don't know if you can see very well, but there's kind of a hole in there at the top and it sort of dips down. And I'm assuming there's some direction this thing's supposed to go in, maybe like facing downward. I don't really know, and I cannot find any information on the internet. But after watching a few YouTube videos, I've kind of come to the conclusion that all I really need to do at the moment is fasten this thing onto the pipe so that I then know where to drill 
the halls. Maybe this is a sign I should take Sunday off because I am in a world of confusion. However, I don't really want to let it defeat me either. I would love to drill a couple holes in this wall today. So, looks like washers go in here. And then we have this piece that came with it. That gets screwed on, but first you have to screw this guy on. So I imagine all this stuff will just be fastened into the wall and I'll be yeah, doing this kind of after. The pipe is there in the wall. This is all fastened into the wall. Yeah, I don't know. Let me attach this and see. Direction does that go like that? Does it matter? So the most important thing is that I measure the distance between this, assuming that this goes kind of something like that, and then make sure when I'm drilling the hole that it doesn't go all wonky. I have a, a feeling this isn't going to be an easy job. I think it's going to be one of these mega frustrating jobs. But I won't know what I'm dealing with until I drill a hole, so maybe I'll just go do that. That'll be my Sunday activity. Sounds fun. So, somewhere there. So, imaginary, top using. I don't know, that seems good. So that's just about a meter. So if I go up, let's say a meter five, to account for the floor. This one's kind of high. Let me get the tops and see what it looks like. Seems about right. And then here's my very unaccurate measuring of the, the tops. Obviously, I'll need to make sure that these are level to each other. Uh, somewhere around there. And somewhere around there. And I guess this is where I am going to drill a couple of massive holes. And hopefully it's all good. Oh, also I need to figure out where I want it in the center. So initially I put these little stone feature shelves into the shower. thought they'd look cool, but I'm going to remove them because for me to get a nice smooth finish on this, having stuff sticking out of the wall is just going to make everything very, very difficult for me. I'm sure a master plasterer can get it done, but for me, these are just going to cause problems. So instead of having those there, I'll probably put some kind of little wire rack type thing in the corner here, and that'll be my holder instead of these racks. Okay, so let me figure out where I'm drilling and then make some holes. That's the center. That's the center. So here and here. I really don't know why I'm so nervous about this. It's just drilling two holes for pipes to go through. If it doesn't work out that it's perfectly straight, I can always just adjust it with a larger drill bit or just work at it. I'll figure it out, but if everything screws up, I can just fill it back in with lime and all will be well. I don't think the wall's going to fall down or anything, but for some reason I have kind of a mental block with this stage. It's going to be another dusty nightmare in here, but I feel like if I can get this done and just get everything prepared for tomorrow, I'll wake up and I'll be really, really excited to tackle this job. Or if everything goes horribly wrong, I'll be quite discouraged and it'll be a pretty tough day tomorrow. Uh, let's see. I'm going to think positively. Let's get the big daddy drill out and get some holes into this extremely thick, very hard wall. I've got some very serious looking bits and I've got a very serious looking drill so I don't know I guess I guess I'll start with the sm smaller bits just to make a hole and then go to the big ones seems about right anyway let me down the gear make a plan and uh, start to drill
All right, let's go. So that one's been a little trickier. It's trying to steer me in a direction that I don't really want to go. Um, so I'll get a thicker drill bit out and see if I can make a bigger hole. It might be risky, but I'm just going to go straight into the gigantic one. Let's do it. So I think the left side is a little bit of a struggle. I'm going to start with some smaller bits. But this is uh, a tricky job to film. So as usual, you get the idea. I'm going to check it again. And hopefully I have a couple of holes. Okay, using this incredibly long cartoon-like drill bit, I've managed to get through to the other side, I think. I still have to go back there and check it out. But that didn't take nearly as long as I was expecting. Uh, that drill is an absolute beast. I, I love it very much. So I am very curious to see what's happening on the other side of this wall and also to get out of this dusty corner. So let's go have a look. Oh no, I forgot about the massive amount of lime I have back here. So I can't actually even get in there to work. So let me see if I can get a bit closer. Go rock climbing. Okay. So they're definitely not level on this side. It's like gone straight through that rock. Ah, oh, the drill. It's amazing. But I have four fairly large buckets of lime and another little bit of lime over here in that so I have to get rid of these guys before I can really work back here. So it looks like job number one for tomorrow might be mixing up several batches of lime so I can at least get rid of a couple of those buckets in there so I can get in without having to climb over rocks. But that's okay because behind me you'll see a rock wall and eventually the tool shed will be over there and that's my next job and that's going to require a foundation built of stone. And that's going to require loads of lime, so I can actually mix up maybe five or six, well, however many buckets I have, which might only be about three, of lime and get those ready to go for inside the shower, but also for the rock wall. So yeah, I could be spending a bit of time tomorrow doing a lot of lime mixing, and then we'll see how far I get. But I'm really happy with the work I did today. I'm not sure I fully understand the tap, but I have a, a rough idea of how things work. I've got a couple of holes in the wall. They're not finished, but it's a good start, and I'm definitely not feeling anywhere close to as intimidated as I was before. So I'm going to call that a fine Sunday of work. I'll see you guys tomorrow for what I'm hoping will be a pretty full day of work on the shower and also mixing up a whole bunch of lime. So I'll see you then. Hello for Monday. It's late morning and I've been super busy mixing up lime, which I'll show you in a minute. Actually, I haven't even started the mixing. I've just been moving lime. It's been a lot of work, but I wanted to show you some work that I did yesterday. I had a flurry of activity before uh, I stopped for the day and I kind of attacked the front of my house garden area. So let me show you that. But first, let's go check out the plant babies. Hello, little babies. Okay, so we have cucumber poking through over here but nothing else doing in this tray and over here we've got a lot of sunflower action I don't know why this guy's not performing but these guys are sparking up quite nicely and then another little guy here and I think there's signs of life from the dill and then a whole bunch of beets and a whole bunch of lettuce so there's some exciting things happening and I just love checking this every day actually twice a day and then over here we have the work that I did last night, evidenced by this wheelbarrow full of weeds. 
and the fact that now you can see my beautiful grapevine. This was covered in a whole bunch of plants before and now it looks nice and happy. I've moved some bananas up there. I've taken the weird tarp off of the front of my house so that looks much better. I need to get a window in there sooner rather than later. Hoping to do that maybe around May or June. And then over here I've pulled out a whole bunch of weeds as well. My hose storage solution is not ideal. But yeah, I was busy yesterday and it was just beautiful temperature for working and I, I got to it. And then today I've been working for a couple of hours trying to clear space back here. I don't have any way of using this lime so these two buckets of lime are going to stay here. But I can access the holes so that's okay. And then I've managed to drag one of those buckets there and I've got five buckets of lime just waiting for sand. I'm not going to film shoveling and moving sand because it's going to be a horrible job but I am curious about how much of this pile I get through. So these are the first two buckets and I'll yeah be curious to see how much it goes down. Lime render is mostly mixed. I've done four buckets. It was a lot of work and I thought I would bring you along for the ride for the last one. I've got the sand ready, I've got the lime putty ready, and I thought I would just talk a little bit about the render I use. Basically I take 40 kilo bags of Calviva quick lime and I slake it and I do it in the oil drum, that orange oil drum, and then I take it out and I store it in other plastic containers for basically as long as possible. The stuff that I'm digging out from behind the house now has been there probably for about four to six months and Apparently, the longer it sits, the better it gets, stickier or something like that. So um, that's what I'm working my way through now. I'm just mixing three buckets of coarse builder's sand with one bucket of lime putty. And I end up with this glorious, glorious stuff. It's so great to use. It's nice and sticky. It goes on the wall beautifully. And I'm a massive fan. And it's great because it's really easy to slake it, which is the process of adding the quick lime into the water and making the putty and it's quite cheap when you do it yourself and it makes loads and loads of stuff and as long as I kind of keep this stirred up it won't it won't go off I can kind of keep coming and adding water to it and making sure it doesn't get all crusty and the white stuff in the buckets that can be there forever till the end of time as long as you keep it covered with a layer of water it's all good so there's not really any massive rush to use this as long as I keep tending to it, but as you can see, it's kind of in my way. So I'm definitely going to be motivated to move on to the tool shed job soon after the shower. And that's exciting because I think it's going to be a really fun job. Anyway, enough chitter chatter about the joys of lime putty and all that. Uh, let's mix up this final batch and then we'll drill some holes from the back of the house and see if I can get this pipe through. Okay, lime, done. So before we drill some holes, look at these little figs. There's lots of little healthy looking figs sprouting out of this tree. I absolutely annihilated this tree in order to make space for the tool shed. 
and just space for walking. There was lots of branches that kind of kept hitting people on the head, but I'm very excited to see that it doesn't look too angry. In fact, I'd say this tree looks quite happy. So that's good news. And then over here, I thought these asparagus, plural for asparagus, were dead. But look at this guy. This thing was definitely not here this morning. I know asparagus grow fast, but that's ridiculous. So that's pretty cool coming from something that I thought was totally dead. So I was ready to start drilling, just get the job done, and then I got the most exciting news. I mean, exciting if you're a lover of gardens and a lover of mulch, as I am. A friend of mine had a whole bunch of straw bales just sitting around her land that she wanted to get rid of. So I went over, I picked up four, and I have mulch now. I've been having a hard time sourcing straw bales, so when I say that was amazing news, I truly, I truly mean it. I love straw bales. I think they're one of the most amazing things to put in your garden. They're great for building with. Those ones you can't build with. They're too old and crusty, but yeah, I love them. I love them, and so I think there's some more over there that maybe I can go get another load of them at some point in the future. So that gives me all the stuff I need to really get going in the garden. I've got a whole bunch of cardboard. I've got some straw bales. I have some plant babies on the go and I have a whole bunch of weeding to do. So I'm gonna be tackling the garden within the next couple weeks and I'm excited to have that key component of mulch, which is massively important here in Portugal. So before I get the drill out again, let's go check out this pile of sand. I put a pretty decent dent in this thing, which is great because now I can actually walk past without having to do acrobatics. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll be able to pull it all up a little bit more and have my path back so that's very good news and now let's drill this looks kind of sketchy it's like the inside of the wall is just kind of coming out um, I can see that there's a rock right where I need to be this rock is loose. Let me just keep drilling, I guess. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if this is how it's supposed to be. Oopsie. I mean, I don't think the entire wall is supposed to come away like that. <laughs> so I've got this tiny hole, and then beyond that, uh, kind of a missing wall. Let me show you. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty extreme. I guess the good news is that these walls are extremely sturdy. Uh, and the other good news is that this is gonna give me plenty of wiggle room, in theory. So yeah, you can see that, that hole looks decent. Don't really know what's happening on this side. Uh, let's go to the other side and see what's going on. Nothing doing. So, I don't have a huge amount of wiggle room, and this definitely, well, I don't think it's level. I'm not sure if it's in the right spot, but it's a starting point. It's through the wall, and then this guy needs a little bit more work. Yay! It's through the wall, and I only had to destroy half the wall to get it done. Now, on to this side. This is, uh, this is tricky. I don't know if I'm doing a bad thing to this wall or what. 
seems fine, but one never knows. So I might take a bit of a break, uh, have a little bit of a ponder, and maybe come at this with a bit of a different approach. What that approach is, I don't know yet. I have a feeling it'll just be more drilling and possibly picking some rocks out from inside the wall. Because I can actually reach my hand in here and kind of pull stuff out. So, I don't know. I just don't know. But we'll find out. Good morning. I'm not going to mess around this morning. I'm basically just going to get this thing drilled uh, off camera. This video is already long enough as it is, but let me show you what I'm going to be doing because very excitingly, I can see where the pipe is getting hung up and it should be a pretty easy fix. So you can see just in there, I've got the pipe stuck on this rock. I don't know if that's going to be all lined up properly, but first thing I need to do is just drill some space, get the pipe all the way through, and then I'll go from there. So I've got some drilling to do. I'm just gonna get stuck in and hopefully it doesn't take me too long. So that was a lot trickier than I was expecting it to be, but I got it done eventually. And though they're not necessarily level or correctly spaced, there's loads of wiggle room now to be able to uh, space it properly and get it level after everything's attached. It's super hot out already. And so I've moved my plumbing office to this pitiful sliver of shade. I definitely have to get a new shade cloth strung up up here. So these pipes go through the wall, plenty of wiggle room to be able to put them where I want and then lime them in place once they get it all accurate. And so after loads of riveting viewing last night about plumbing, um, shower taps, I have a better grasp of the entire concept of the whole operation. I still don't actually know which direction these things are supposed to go in. So if anybody knows out there, please do let me know. It's the part that goes into the tap, and I don't know if it's supposed to go like this way, or like this way, or sideways, or what. So I would love any info on that. What I do know how to do is attach this guy, which is a compress compression fitting. It's got something called an olive inside there, and basically it goes on the pipe, and then you have this little gold thing as well. Oops. <laughs> which is called an olive, that goes on the pipe, and then you put the pipe as far into the fitting you're screwing into as possible, push it all the way in, and then tighten it all up, and you use tools to get it super tight, and then I think the act of tightening this squashes this gold thing, and that's what creates the seal. So I learned that, and so what I would like to do today to finish off this video is attach these two pieces onto the pipe, and then put them through this pipe and then just go rest them back in the holes in preparation for attaching everything. I'm going to line them into place in the next video and in order to line them up perfectly I'm actually going to attach it to the tap. I'll protect it all, cover it all up, attach everything in place, that'll allow me to move everything and make sure everything's spaced and then once everything's limed, solidified, I'll remove the tap, cover the pipe up and continue working. It's kind of hard to explain and I should probably just show you, but I just want to let you know that I have a plan. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling a lot better than I was yesterday about this whole plumbing stuff. And let's just get these things attached, the pipes in the wall. So first up, internet video people had a little device for taking out the burrs. I don't have that, so I'm just going to attempt to get them off with sandpaper. Okay, all sanded. I've given them a rinse off. Now it's time to attach these guys. So, that goes on there, that goes on there. For anybody wondering, I'm using 15 millimeter pipe. Uh, it just seems like the standard thing to use around these parts. Pipe gets pushed in as far as it'll go. All of thing goes up as far as it'll go on lightly with the fingers and then I get the big tools out and that squashes the olive in place. So I've got this guy and this guy.
So I'm having a hard time gripping with this one, so I think I actually need to get another one of these. Uh, so I'll put them on partially, and they don't need to be on all the way right now. I can tighten everything up later on. But let me finish up the other one, and then we'll get them into place. Okay, there we have it. Pipes through the walls. And I'm happy with how that's gone. I still have a lot of work to do. I'm actually going to continue on today with a lot more work. And I'm hoping to get another episode out, a bonus episode, again, maybe on Sunday or early next week with the continuation of the shower work. I'm really excited to just move on from this and get onto the tool shed foundation. So I'm kind of going for it with the work. Um, and I'm getting a lot done lately. So I want to share it with you. If anybody has any plumbing advice for me, I am very open to it. So please say hello in the comments and let me have it, whatever advice you have. Anyone has any questions, please do leave a comment. I love hearing from people. So as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.